There's just seven days to go in deciding who will be All-Ireland Hurling Champions for 1997. Well, over the next hour, we'll be looking ahead to the big match, talking to some of the people involved and offering you our prediction as to the destination of the Lee McCarthy Cup. Yes, a really fascinating prospect this year in the hurling final. Well, no need to repeat the historical significance of this match. It is, of course, the first final to feature two teams in the same province, two teams who've already met in the Munster final, and one of whom, by virtue of that, back into the championship thanks to the new rules this year. And now joining me in studio for our look ahead to this clash of Clare and Tipperary or Tomás McCahey, our regular hurling analyst, and Michael Babs Keating, manager of the last Tipperary team to lift the Lee, Lee McCarthy Cup in 1991. Babs, the significance of this match, as I said, brings all kinds of baggage with it, I suppose, coming into this final that make it even more fascinating than an All-Ireland final would be anyway. Well, it does for Tip and Clare, and uh, I suppose, I hope that Leinster Counties and Galway and Ulster won't feel too hard done by on, on Sunday, but uh, the hype that exists between Tip and Clare at, at, at the moment is, is, no, is, 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 is as high as, as, as anything that ever existed in the past between Munster, Leinster or, 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 or Galway. So from that point of view, it's going to be a very special occasion next Sunday and uh, a, a day I'm certainly looking forward to. I suppose, like, since their emergence onto the scene, Clare are, are lining up new rivals all the time. There was Limerick for a while, and now it's Tipperary. It is, yeah, but um, Clare, you know, despite all their, their prominence over the last couple of years, they're still back with the same team, which, like, has some yeah. bearing on next Sunday. Like, they, they, they obviously have one change, I think, from, from the team that won the All Island in 95, which is unusual in mm -hmm. itself. And, um, whether that's a good thing for Jerry Lachlan and his colleagues or not, you know, remains to be seen. But in my opinion, they've spent the last few years trying to find a few forwards and they mm -hmm. haven't succeeded. Mm -hmm. From a Tipperary point of view, though, I, Claire Tomas going into this match, they haven't lost a match in the Championship, whereas Tip have, of course. We've seen two sides to Tipperary, and the question is, like, which is the real one, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, at the start of the year, I seen them playing in Torles against Tip, uh, Kilkenny in the, in the league game in, in, in Torles, and they looked very, very impressive that night. And I went away saying that they're the team yeah. they're going to be watching for the Championship. Um, got over Limerick in, in their first championship game and looked very impressive then. But uh, once the final day, they disappointed me on once the final day. I'm sure they were players themselves were very disappointed as well. Uh, but came back very, very strongly. Made a few changes. I mean, again, mm -hmm. the, this backdoor system like that, they were able to learn from the mistakes. They made their changes for the semi-final and seemed to pick the right team against yeah. Wexford the last day and looked very impressive. OK, well, let us now consider the summer that it has been so far for Tipperary. A summer indeed like no other. It's been a slightly meandering road to the final, one which has taken them, for instance, to the unusual surrounds of Clonus, the home of Ulster football. Well, that side of the Hurling Championship now reviewed. Limerick, the Munster champions, were Tip's first opponents in mid-June. Limerick had beaten Waterford in their opening assignment, but there were no match for the Premier men. 47,000 people packed into Semple Stadium for not a Munster final, but a Munster semi-final on a cloudy day. Tipperary, their very first attack. All-star Liam Cowell, Blumet over the bar. Just 20 seconds gone, and Tipperary are really going to put it up to the champions. Well intercepted by Declan Nash. Nice hurling by the corner back, but he was hooked at precisely the right moment. This is Cleary from what seemed an impossible angle. He's on form, the man from Nina Aero. Mr. Declan Roy sending in a good low ball towards Michael Cleary, and there he is as a result of a mess up by the Limerick full back line. Comes out towards Kevin Tucker, and that's the lead again for Tipperary. Well done, Sean. Here come Tipperary. Tommy's done, and that is over the bar. Tumi Vara have their name on the scoreboard. Aiden Butler sending it across to John Lahey. There's plenty of green grass in front of him. He has to go to long. Stay quick. Serious, but not in by Michael Cleary. For what opportunism. And the tip people are the premier side, no doubt. Defending All-Ireland champions Wexford opening their campaign in a blaze of glory against Offaly. In the end, only narrowly holding on. Liam 
Dunn coming to take this 65. His 23rd championship match. Wexford's captain in towards Gary Lapp, and he was anticipating racing in ahead of Keenan with the shot. Not much far behind it. He's following in, and Wexford have another, and it's Gary Lapp. Just going. Locked in towards Gary Lapp. And another one. The overhead spot. Johnny Pilkington. Great solo run by Johnny Pilkington. Chased after by Card. It's gold! A goal by Johnny Pilkington. Martin launching another late attack for Offley. Can they snatch it late? Here's Billy Dooley. In the Munster final, it all went horribly wrong for Tipperary. A late slip, if anything, served to flatter their performance. It was a match which offered only glimpses of Tip at their very best. Great catch by Baker. Lobbed inside, stopped by Colin Bonner, won by John Lahey. The counter-attack upfield towards Michael Cleary. Surrounded there by Brian Lawn. Played back neatly there to Ryan. And Declan Ryan puts it over the bar. For Clare, keeping it away from O'Dwyer. Declan Ryan once again easily tips best forward in this match. He's got another point. Colin Bonner was out first for it. Now Tommy Dunn into space. Liam Cowell quick off the blocks, trying to get there ahead of Frank Lowen. It's John Lahey once again. Tip looking to the seasoned performers like Lahey and Ryan. That's another fight shot of another great point. John Lahey hammering it across off the crossbar and it uh, has gone over the bar Clara protesting furiously Ryan curling it in delightfully in towards Cahill once more across to John Lahey oh he didn't connect as he would have wished and there was a goal chance there and he's missed it Kilkenny made a decent start against Wexford in the Leinster final but in the end, only one name was on everyone's lips, Billy Byrne. The face of Liam Dunn from Aulard the Bala. Wexford champions twice in recent years. Down it goes, in towards Billy Byrne with his first touch, but he scored. the stick, the hand pass to Gary Lapham, the champions now turning it on the second half, against very game challengers, in towards Burn again, he's cut it once more, edge of the square, and that was it, here comes Billy Burn again, a wonderful super sign, He's only been on the field about 10 minutes and already he's a candidate for man of the match. There's only one Billy Bourne. Clonus was the unusual setting for Tipperary's All-Ireland quarter-final and they were pitted against Down, who were mostly giving second best. Hayden oh, Ryan taking it down, Hayden Ryan bearing down on the Down goal. Alan across to Martin Coulter. Coulter to Gary Savage. Old Sands is in there with a the white helmet. Gary Coulter! That was a great goal. Ryan O'Mara, he really has been a thorn and downside. Very good player. Inside, and Aidan Flanagan has pushed the cobwebs. <laughs> And the beaten Munster finalists really came good in the semi-final, as Wexford were well below their best, and John Lahey was simply masterful. Match underway. And 
and straight away the pressure on the Wexford backs. Brian O'Mara playing that one in towards Eugene O'Neill. Lovely hand pass outside here towards John Lahey. First chance, first point. Ten seconds gone, what a start. Back towards Declan Ryan again. Knew he was going to be hooped. Two men after him. Back to Conor Gleeson. The guard are based here in Dublin. And just at the edge of the square, it's gone in! John Lahey has done it again! towards Eugene O'Neill, comes back out here towards Tom Dodd, tries to dodge away from the challenges of Eugene Furlong, very acute angle in his face, very little of that, knocking it over the bar, wonderful score. Back in by McGrath again, into Brian O'Mara, trying to get free, the hand pass forward for Lahey, here he comes, great save, back out towards Eugene, back out towards O'Mara, a stop again on the one, it's gone in! Declan Ryan under a great flash of the ash on it goes for Michael Cleary. This is a great spell for Michael Cleary. He's found his confidence again, and they are so, so happy. Yeah, one of the good days of the summer for Tipperary Babs. Looking at them overall and what you've seen of Tip this summer, what do you make of this team? It's very hard to know insofar as that uh, the Munster final was a poor display, and yet they're only beaten by a goal. They came back to play down, which uh, taught to brave people nothing. And there were outsiders coming in to play Wexford with, uh, with more changes. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm still not sure whether to assess to play as having an outstanding display on the day or whether Wexford were very, very poor on the day. Because looking back, you mentioned, and a lot of people have mentioned to most that uh, Munster final, and keep saying, you know, only lost by a puck of the ball, and the puck of the ball did fall to John Lahey at the end. But sort of, you've been looking back at the tapes of this match, and you reckon that, that Clare were far better than that. Yeah, um, I looked at the tape again during the week, and like, going in at half time, Clare easily could have been 10 to 12 points ahead of Tiberi. There was so much dominant in that game. But it's a big failing Clare I have at the moment. They're not putting teams away. Um, Tipperary are on the other side, OK, would have been very, very unhappy with their, maybe their forward display that day. And um, they made changes the last day. The big question mark again, they took Eugene, Eugene O'Neill off the last day in, in, in the semi-final. Who, who are they going to pick at full forward the next day? And um, that's the big one people are going to look at. If you had the pick of this one, Babs, in terms of who they would put in full forward, they need somebody like Nicky English. Uh, well... I suppose uh, that could be said of Nicky. I'd, I'd, I'd like to think I was manager of a Tipperary team that had Nicky available, fully fit to play full forward. He certainly would be on my team, and I think he'd be on any team in the country. When I look at the full forwards available to all the leading counties at the moment, a fit Nicky English would be on any of those teams. So um, I'm playing golf with Nicky during the week. He's certainly fit. <laughs> uh, he's not putting too good, but um, it's a problem for Lynn. The opposite, like the player, player coming back with a settled team, the same team they've had for the last two years. But as Tomás said, they haven't been putting teams away. And whatever advantage it is, and the advantages every day go by even to the last seven days that are left, the advantage of, are, you know, is going in favour yeah. of Tipperary. Mm -hmm. All right, well, obviously we can offer you our opinions here on the programme as to what we think of the rival teams, the tactics and the players. But we also wanted to find out what the managers think of their players. Well, now, taking into account that the teams have not yet been picked or certainly not announced, we got Len Gaynor and Gerlach Nan to run the rule over the full panel. And we've picked out the players that we think could make up the final 15 on each side. Now, we're going to start with Tipperary and the views of Len Gaynor. Well, Brendan Cummins is our goalkeeper and he comes from South Tipperary as well, which be more renowned for football than hurling. But uh, he, he's an accomplished hurler and a brilliant footballer and uh, he plays very well in the goals for us. He's very alert and a great puck out and great clearance. Paul Shelley, right full back, I suppose. Paul has problems with his weight all the time. We have to keep him away from the table as often as we can, but he's a fine hurler. He works very hard at his game and trains very diligently. And Noel is, I suppose, the father figure of the team. He's been around a long time. Uh, fine strapping man and good presence in the full back line and a great leader. And Michael Ryan, of course, then is great power and great mobility in his play. A great dash out of defence when he gets that ball in his fist and can be a real rouser for the team. Liam Sheedy is a newcomer to the team and um, has made his presence felt. He was very effective in the All-Ireland semi-final. Colin Bonner has been around a long time. Good player, very fast and very mobile. 
Uh, good under the dropping ball and uh, a good leader also. Connell Bonner is just back after a long layoff from injury. He had a serious back operation last year and uh, thankfully he's come through that and he seems to be back to full form at the moment. Tommy is a smashing hurler, very good ball player and very keen and a good score getter as well. Conor Gleeson, our captain, he's shown great courage and great leadership in all his games so far this year. We're delighted with him. Neil McGrath, he's great presence uh, on the pitch and uh, a great man to get the ball into the inside forwards. Declan Ryan, of course, is a, an old soldier on this team. He has played many a great game for Tipperary and uh, he's a truly marvellous player. John Leahy is a stylist, of course, very adept at sneaking into open spaces to create scores and make scores and take scores and a wonderful player to have on the team. Michael Cleary, of course, is a very senior player also. He would hurl seven days of the week for you. Very keen and uh, tremendous hands and uh, it's great to see him there again. Eugene O'Neill, of course, is the baby of the team. He, he's in his first year at senior level for Tipperary. But he has tremendous skill, that's what I admire him most for, tremendous skill and uh, tremendous manoeuvrability around the square and a good goal getter. Brian O'Mara is another strapping man from Mullinahon. A good hand and is good at taking on players and getting scores. Yes, obviously all positive thoughts from the manager about the tip team, but we must come back again to Moss Mulcahy to this idea of the possibility of Nicky English having been involved in the championship this year because I know the tip Ray did approach him earlier in the year to be part of the panel. Yeah, well, I suppose that, that comes down to Tipperary selectors, but I mean, when maybe they've looked at the, the monster final and they looked at their defeat to Clare, they really struggled in, in, in their full forward line. Um, the likes of John Lahey was picked at midfield early on in the year, but they brought him to half forward. They have Liam McGrath, Declan Ryan and John Lahey in their half forward line, which is a very, very accomplished and very mm -hmm. experienced half forward line. But it's in the inside that they yeah. seem to have major troubles. Mikey Clare is not probably having the best of time. Um, it's probably little, expecting it too much on Eugene O'Neill's shoulder. I mean, he was minor last year and a very, very good player. And he's probably a good player for the future, you know, to go into an All-Ireland final and to actually dominate sure. on, on the calibre of the likes of Brian Lawn, you know. And yeah. um, maybe Nicky, Nicky's experience, I think, w w w might be a key thing there next Sunday if he was picked. But, I mean, that's, that's water under the bridge at this stage. Yeah. That's too late. They have to get on with the game now at this stage. Let's talk about two players, about Michael Cleary, Babs, and about John Lahey. Now, John Lahey, first of all, he can't be fully right going into this from his, his fractured jaw in the semi-final. Talking he, about wearing a protective helmet and uh, sort of gear that he wouldn't be normally used to and so forth. So there has to be a question mark over him. There has, yeah, but like Johnny is such a good player and um, I, I'd certainly worry about him. And what worries me more about Johnny is that, that he li missed at least 10 days, maybe to two weeks training after the Wexford game. Yeah. And John is the kind of player that can't afford to miss any night training. Mm -hmm. And Clare were in an All Ireland final a week before tip, so they had that extra week, which can be of help because from tonight on, players are relaxing and just you know going, going through the small mm -hmm. small little procedures that apply sure. to All Ireland. So that would worry me more about Johnny than the actual injury itself, yeah. because knowing Johnny, you know, broken bones or cuts or anything don't interfere with Johnny when sure. the ball is in play. Tomás, Babs was making a point to us uh, up in the office earlier on about Michael Cleary playing him in corner for right corner forward and saying that this isn't the place to play him and, and you agreed because you say it's one of the most difficult places to play on the field. Yes, I was probably never at happiest when, I, when yeah. the, team the team sheet came out and you were picked the right corner forward, especially if you're a right-handed player because most of the possession that's coming down that wing is coming down to your left hands, which means that you have to go outside the train. Yeah. And that wasn't my... You have to do a turn you in have to, to do get a turn back in, And yeah. that wasn't my strongest point, my left hand at that stage, you know. And um, it's the same. And you've seen the switch that was made the last day when Michael Cleary went from right corner forward to left corner forward against Wexford. He came in with three points because he was going outside yeah. in his right hand, picking it up and coming back inside and got three great points that time. No, I'm sure that will have done his confidence a world of good. Yeah. Let's look at a positive side of this Tipperary team this year. Tommy Dunn moved to midfield. It certainly worked the last day. Yeah, um, it was... When they, were, they, when they were lacking a bit of strength in the half-forward line, the obvious thing was to move John Lahey back into the half-forward line, which meant Tommy Dunn had to go to midfield. Now, either that worked two ways for them. Either it was going to be a disaster or it was yeah. going to work brilliantly. For me, it has worked out a treat for them because mm -hmm. Tommy, the last day, gave an exceptional performance. Um, obviously, he's got to do it again next week, but um, he's a brilliant hurler, a great striker of the ball. He's very good at free-taking, but his striking left and right has yeah. been excellent. Yeah. All right, well, we have a commercial break coming up after that. We'll be running the rule over the Clare team, or at least...